Here's some tips for the double and or dual wavetable envelope generator and VCA with lots of features from the Harvestman. The double and or is a really handy module and can be used in many ways, such as dual wavetable envelope generator and LFO. Rise and fall can have their own shapes, dual VCA with cross modulation, complex wavetable ADSR, clock, generator, chaotic noise oscillator, stepped voltages, complex control with the freeze and mirror functions. A good understanding of this first version of the double and or might prepare us when the expander for the double and or Mark II will be out. It might be confusing at first since the left side is a mirror reflection of the other side and all writings are spelled backwards. We already know just by looking at the panel that the double and or is horizontally symmetrical. So if you understand one side, you should be clever enough to seize the opposite one. I must warn you that, each time I'll give information for the left side, I'll be speaking backwardly. So, exactly like this. Well let's just forget about this backward speaking. This will be long enough to cover every aspect of this module. We better start now. It might be useful to know that the module is 21 HP and need 225 milliamps of power consumption. Now let's look at the front panel for real, shall we? Let's do a quick patch. Plug any audio source into the VCA input and use its output right next to it. We will go deeper into the VCA section later, but for now let's focus on the envelope features. Control of the decay and attack with their associated knobs. The knob next to the digit screen let you select the envelope shape. By adjusting the attack and decay and the wave shapes, you can have lots of possibilities. Three behave modes are available by the push of this button on the middle side. Let's try the sustain mode. The sustain mode will hold the envelope at its maximum value, if there is still a gate present at the end of the attack phase. The next mode freely cycles back and forth between attack and decay phases with no trigger necessary like and LFO. It is important to know that the left side panel display is backward but the knobs are not. They will work clockwise and counterclockwise exactly like the right side. The CV control input and the attenuator knob. Each envelope features one CV input which can be assigned to any of the following parameters, attack time, decay time, and curve shape. The destination button will let you select which parameter the incoming CV will be addressed. The parameters can be combined and the CV input also accepts negative signal. The double and or's envelope are normal to its respective VCA and can last 30 seconds per cycle. By using the envelope output, you can send the 0 to 8 volt envelope to any other VCA or any other CV destination in your patch. Let's try it with the algorithm a bit, shall we? Since we are speaking about VCA stuff, I'd like to share with you that, I have just noticed that the King Slender can also be used as a utility VCA. Set the slew amount, and invert the incoming CV, with some minor adjustments, and you get a nice VCA.
You don't know how much this makes me horny, but okay. Now, let's get back with the double and or. Zerger The envelopes can separately generate triggers at the end of attack and end of decay. Useful to sync other stuff or to trigger delayed elements such as percussion or any other modulations. The double and ors shapes are stored in the EEPROM at the back of the module. There is two EEPROMs available. First let's look at the original EEPROM that comes with the module. Each EEPROM has two banks of 16 envelope shapes each. Let's take a look at those shapes with the oscilloscope and run the envelope in LFO mode. To switch between banks, hold down the CD select button for 2 seconds. When you see the little dot next to the digit number, you know you're in the second bank. While the first bank has some very different shapes, the second bank has a smooth morphing of exponential to linear to logarithmic curves. Pink Noise Technology made an EEPROM if you need more shapes to express your emotions with wavetables at very low cost. The first bank of the Pink Noise EEPROM is exactly the same as the original one. So we will just focus on the second bank for this one. You can change the EEPROM at the back of the module and warning, pay attention to the EEPROM side. Robotopsy made a convenient display wallpaper showing each shapes available. You can get those grid on the Muff Wiggler forum in the formerly known Harvestman page. It's a quick way to get the shape you need, well, I meant the envelope shape, not your shape. Swish this. You can select different shapes for the attack and decay by holding down the mode select button for 2 seconds. When the LEDs are inverted, you know this mode is activated. Now, the attack will be selected with the opposite shape knob. Since we got the scope plugged in, let's try out the mirror function. When a gate signal is detected at this input jack, the attack and decay will flip along with their adjustments. You can achieve very complex ADSR with both envelopes. To achieve ADSR with the double and or, you need to trick both envelopes simultaneously or have them delayed. Just on top of the digit display is a mixed output of both envelopes. With this knob, you can pan or adjust the amount of the envelopes. Four options are available to trig the second envelope. You can choose to trig the second one with external source, or you can use the initial trig of the first one, or its end of attack clock, or end of decay. With the mix knob, you can adjust precisely the amount the ADSR will have. Let's start for real, the mix envelope will go to the right VCA control input, and the right envelope will be the first to be triggered. For a longer ADSR, the end of decay clock will trigger the left envelope.
Okay, time to complicate things a bit. The end of decay of the second envelope will trigger a sample and hold that will go to the 1 volt per octave of the Kermit. So, each time the ADSR will finish its cycle, a new random note will be heard. Try different attack and decay for each envelopes and different shapes too. With the panning amount, the envelope shapes, the timing of the second envelope start, and the splitted shapes. There's a lot of options here. The double and or can run its LFO at audio rate. Let's explore this feature a bit. Let's take the right envelope output and send it to the right VCA in. The left envelope will go through the King's Lender attenuverter before sending it back to the double and or to have a negative signal for phase cancellation. And we will use the audio from the center mixed output. Switch both envelope in LFO mode. <laughs> Shorter the envelope is, higher the pitch will be. Only by self-patching the module, with every features we've learned so far, things can go crazy very fast. If you want more double and or craziness, here is a link to an old video using only the double and or and bionic Lester and some help from the pressure points too. When the freeze input jack receives a gate signal, the envelope will stop and stay at its amount, as long as the gate is detected. The envelope will go directly to the Kermit 1 volt per octave. This feature can be used as stepped voltage or some sort of sample and hold. Useful to control any parameter, like pitch, amplitude, wavetable selection, or anything else in your modular case.
Nishkas Damsarkne Nishkas Yisiv. As you probably figured it out already, each envelope has its own output, and there is also the mix output for both envelopes. The envelope output is normal to the VCA control input and can be overridden by patching into the control input jack. The big knob at the bottom opens the VCA manually. The gain law of each VCA is switchable between linear and exponential by the push of this button. Holding down the law select button for 2 seconds, and it will activate the cross modulation between the opposite channel. A red LED will illuminate to indicate that this mode is enabled. The exponential mode can distort, if excess audio or control input is given, its sensitivity can be adjusted by an internal trimmer. When both sides are in cross-modulation mode, be ready for more madness from this device. When the envelope runs in LFO, you can use the clock outs just to sequence some events in your patch. For this example, the end of attack and end of decay clocks are connected to the 4MS peg and shuffling clock multiplier. It can be an interesting way to clock your entire patch, using other clock and tempo modules, to have everything synced together. The tempo and the swing of the rhythm, will be influenced by the attack and the decay amount. This module may scare most users. It's backward spelling, it's enormous amount of features, but once you are used to it, a powerful tool it becomes. I hope this video helped you to tame this beast a bit, I know it was an old module, but I had too many requests for it. I had to make it before the Mark II version is complete when the expander will be out. And when this will happen, be sure I'll study this combo a lot and share it with you. Do you know why I'm doing all this? It's because I love you so much. So you, so love so I so love you.